All right. So here with my friend, let's show us a little bit what you're doing here. So the people are interested and can also, you know, um, get your recommendations here. Okay. Can you tell us more about this specifically one? Yes. Yeah, so specifically this one, it's a trade we did recently. Uh, we put out uh, to buy a 120 strike put on IBM here for the March 19th. It's a, a post event trade. Uh, we do all kinds of trades. We do short term, you know, one month trades, two month trades, uh, event trades, straddles, all different kinds. So this was a post event. Uh, and we're saying to buy the March 19, 120 strike put, maximum entry price of 615. So we give you all the details, uh, what to buy, uh, you know, when to buy it. It goes directly to your email, it goes directly to your text if you want. Uh, and it says, you know, what entry price, you know, you can purchase this up to uh, with the MEP right here of 615. Uh, we provide the chart. So we show you everything that we're doing here. Um, you know, this right now is it's the technical indicators that will uh, be there. It's, it's in a bear flag. Uh, it's coming up against 20 month moving average which has been resistance uh, for quite some time now. Uh, and then it's also failing at all the daily moving averages. Uh, we also do other unique things like looking at year to date break even and 10% and 20% levels. Uh, it failed right at the year, 0% year to date break even uh, this year. And uh, on its recent rally back kind of after bouncing after the earnings. And then we go into sentiment indicators as well. So one of the unique things that we do is we look at buy to open data. So that's typically retail investors uh, that are buying um, options, uh, whether it's put or calls. And, you know, a lot of the times they'll generate some negative sentiment in a, a company that's trending upwards or the opposite positive sentiment in a company that's trending downwards. So we're kind of contrarian at nature, but we stay within the trend. Uh, so as you can see here, you know, the 50 the day call put ratios in the 96 percentile. So, People have been extremely bullish on IBM. Uh, we're going to look at that, you know, and kind of take the opposite side of that. We also have an extremely low short interest float. Only 3% of the shares are, are sold short. So that gives you a lot less of an opportunity uh, for a short squeeze, uh, kind of like we've seen in, uh, you know, all kinds of high short interest stocks. You know, these are the type of stocks you want to short, so you want to buy puts on them. And then we also break down how much are these options costing? Uh, is another indicator. We have plenty of more too, but you'll see here, it's only in the 13th percentile. So they're fairly cheap right now. Uh, we look at that on a 52 week basis. So you haven't seen options uh, cheaper than this other than, uh, you know, for, for quite some time. Uh, and it's a good opportunity. You want to buy options when they're cheap. You know, you don't want to buy options when implied volatilities have exploded. Uh, we just have with, with the famous one that everyone is talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like GameStop, you know, their yes. IVs explode to a thousand percent, which yes. is absolutely good. I've never seen a thousand percent implied volatility on a stock, not even wow. Tesla. <laughs> what was it? Uh, what was it? What so, was the price? What was the price today for the call options in, in GameStop? Do you have it right there? Probably can pull that up. All right. Just an example that people can see the type of analysis that you do here that it can benefit the yeah, option yeah. traders. Yes. We actually might have a better one right here. Gotta find it. Here is my, well, I can just pull something up. Don't need that. There we are. All right. All right. So quickly pulls up uh, at the money options. Uh, implied volatilities are 755 at the money right now. Wow, uh, percent. So, I mean, that's that's insane. <laughs> have you seen something like that before? I, I have not seen anything like that before. So you're paying. I mean, you're you're taking an at the money option on a stock that's now priced at ninety dollars, and you know it's 
the bid ask is 23 and a half by 24 and a half on, on a basically at the money option, you know, that you need to see a move uh, obviously. And it has moved like that. So that's what the, what the market makers are doing. They're pricing in for these moves. Uh, but what's going to happen is this implied volatility. Once everything kind of settles down, is just going to implode uh, and the options will eventually, you know, you could be right. If you held this option, say you bought, uh the july even if you buy like the april contract right that's almost 300 percent implied volatility you know you're you're paying 45 dollars for at the money and 90 strike on GameStop. if that implied volatility starts moving you still need that stock to be above 132 uh just to zero out so i mean to to, to even break even you're gonna need yeah, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna need a what, forty percent move just to break even on that if those implied volatilities come in on you, something like that. So I mean, that's pretty that option, you're not, that option expire in April, right? That one. That was, correct. Yes, that would okay. Yeah, so near actually nearly a forty percent, forty percent or fifty percent move, you're gonna need because uh, what fifty percent would be half of. You know, forty five dollars would be one thirty five. So I mean, there you go. Exactly. You you got your bid ask here. Your your ask is on forty five seventy. So you need a fifty percent move in the stock just to break even on that option. And the way we play, we look for hundred percent winners. So you would need to move from ninety dollars to one eighty uh, to break even on that. That's this is a place where buying options is not optimal. Uh, and as you see though, these implied volatilities implode. You know, yeah. maybe selling options uh, would be a better strategy here because you could, the stock could go nowhere and you could still be making money off of it. So you have the chart where you were showing me the short interest again. Could you go back to the same exercise and see? Uh, yes. So as you can see, this is insane too. This is incredible, this one. <laughs> I mean, just look at that move. You look at a one-year basis. Wow. Short interest is kind of just going through the roof. Uh, another way to look at it I had here, we got a five-year chart quickly over here. Just in, this is in my icon. So you can see that, you know, this has kind of the data with it as well. 102% of the float is short right now. So, you know, this is something that we noticed, like I said, we played this um, twice, but, you know, we, we got out before even the huge move uh, with, you know, thousand percent gainers on the options. Uh, so, I mean, it was, it was quite insane. And, and that was, we were early, we exited early uh, because we felt that there could be liquidity risk uh, with something going so parabolic, um, you know, but just look at that. You got 102% short float. And now it's finally rolling over. Uh, you know, I'm really going to be surprised to see what the next short interest report shows, how much uh, shorter this has gotten. You know, you saw SAC, or, uh, well, 0.72 now. Uh, Steve Cohen kind of uh, helped bail out Melvin Capital. Uh, they took like a 50% haircut uh, on the whole portfolio due to this trade. You know, so I'm, I'm curious of how much they've gotten out of the trade. But, you know, we kind of knew this was coming. I, I, I was talking to a buddy and, and my brother-in-law is actually even texting me like, what's going on with GameStop? And I'm like, as soon as I got the text message from my brother-in-law and as soon as I went to Facebook and saw um, everybody talking about stocks <laughs> instead, of, instead of puppies and babies and family events, I knew that there was something going on that was this Not is the good. bubble, it, typical it, bubble, yes. <laughs> yeah, this is going to end badly. You know, that's that's all I can say. It, it, you know, still what I think might be the most surprising thing, I, I know there was a shelf offering, but I don't know how much went out uh, in GameStop. You know, they didn't say they were issuing shares. They did a shelf offering back in December. You know, I don't, well, it'll be interesting to kind of see, I haven't looked at the data yet to see if they did issue any shares during this rise. They, you know, if, if they didn't, I don't know what they're thinking. Uh, they should have been issuing shares to shore up their balance sheet. Uh, but, you know, I'll have to look at that later. 
And so the short interest in when everything happened was like a hundred forty percent. Was uh, yeah. So yep. so you're saying yes. Yep. So the short interest percentage, uh, fifty two week high was uh, looks like a hundred eight percent, but the float's one forty. Wow. Um, so that means they're more short than the float. Uh, pl you know, plain and simple. They, they, I mean, they're that's extremely short. That means you're leveraging sh short more more than you know shares are even available. Uh, and that's so how many how many shares were available when that happened. We should be able to find total flow right here. Yeah, so the free float was 50.68 million uh, with outstanding at 69.75. You got to take out the treasury shares. Uh, so, I mean, 50 million shares. So, um, you know, they're, they're short, they're leveraging over that 50 million. And that's, that's, that's pretty remarkable. And you know that, you know, that's obviously a hedge fund, but still you got to think for people to be buying 50 million shares, um, you know, it's, it wasn't, uh, we were seeing turnover, you know, in volume on this stock like crazy. And you know, it wasn't retail doing all of that. So. Um, was that, something. was a mix between institutionals and, and retail traders? Uh, definitely. Yeah, it was definitely a mix between institutional and retail traders. Uh, you know, when you're seeing, you know, 10,000 lots going through of, of shares or 100,000 lots, you know, those, those aren't, those aren't retail traders. Those are institutions. Uh, exactly what we were kind of saying when we were talking about is, you know, they smelt blood and other hedge funds piled on with the retail traders. Uh, just, you know, when you, they smell blood of a competitor, a lot of the times they'll do that. We've seen it before. We've seen it with uh, Carl Icahn and, and, and Bill Ackman. I mean, the, the Herbalife saga uh, where Icahn essentially squeezed out Ackman uh, of his short on that. And, and this is just another example of it. Uh, not as well known people, but, you know, there was people that did pile in that are fairly well known. Uh, but, you know, well, they so got in and they got out. That's the difference. You know, the, the people yeah. that are holding the bank still are the, the people saying they have diamond hands and that they're holding the line and, you know, they're the ones that are going to get hurt. And unfortunately, that's going to be retail too. You know, some retail made money, guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, some of them were smart, took money off the table. Um, but some of them bought into the mania and somebody had to buy 400 plus a share. Uh, somebody had to be uh, uh, that top tick. And, you know, it's just unfortunate, you know, there's going to be winners and there's going to be losers. Uh, and, and retail kind of gets dr driven into these kind of crazy moves. Uh, Kind of as well. the, the information that is generated from the order flow that was generated from Robinhood, that's data that got released to all these big guys that they knew this is going on because they're selling all these orders to uh, all these uh, hedge funds. So it's, it, it was not a surprise for them because they probably saw those you know, var variations or the specific stocks that they can, oh, okay, that's something going on here. Maybe you're just jumping in the right. Yep, yeah, exactly. I mean, and there's plenty of other things that you can look at to kind of see, uh, you know, a lot of generation order flow. You know, there's plenty of option uh, type of uh, software out there now that's detecting order flow. And you can do that, you know, just you can see it if you look up like open interest or volume for the day, you know, that there's flow coming into certain areas and they're going to jump on it if, if they kind of see what's happening. And like we were talking about earlier, you know, really what kind of happened was it was not just a short squeeze. What happened, it became like a gamma squeeze on the dealers. So these dealers are selling those option contracts to hedge that, you know, they're buying shares when it gets through that strike, they're having to continuously buy more and more shares to hedge that risk of selling that call option uh, that's now get going dramatically in the money. Uh, so they're constantly doing it. It becomes kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, it just, it just steamrolls. Uh, so that's exactly kind of what happened. And then once you hit the restrictions on the shares, uh, you, you kind of saw that the juice came right out. You know, I mean, they're restricting you from, uh, buying any more shares and you can only sell, uh, you know, you, you're going to create massive liquidity at that point um, because nobody can buy, but you can sell. 
uh, at least from a retail standpoint, you know, that's just gonna that's just gonna cause an unwind, and that's what we've saw over the past, past few days of, of this short squeeze. Now is coming right back down, um, and it's not like I said, not just GameStop. This was across, yeah, all kinds of short interest, uh, high short interest companies. We saw it in Fubu TV. We saw it in, like I said, Koss, which is a headphone maker. We saw it in AMC, obviously. Uh, we saw it in Nokia. I mean, it 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 went across the board. Anything that was kind of highly shorted uh, had big moves. Even ones that were, you know, a lot more liquid or, or haven't didn't generate, you know, a two, 300% or a thousand percent gain in shares. You know, um, you still saw it like overstock.com was another one. Uh, it traded we're actually in. Um, and it's still, you know, it got a little squeeze and it's pulled back now recently, but it still got a bump. Uh, you know, even though they didn't go as nuts, you saw it across the board. It was like people were targeting uh, highly shorted companies. Uh, you know, and now we might see a little bit of a trend change. This does happen from time to time throughout cycles. And then, you know, highly shorted stocks will kind of go out of favor again. And you'll see long consolidation periods. And, you know, how you can play those still is you look for those breakouts in them. And then you'll, you'll get these moves, but they'll just be less frequent. What happened was we just had a bunch uh frequently happen i think um a good way to kind of look at this is uh what's uh uh what is it uh mania's panics and crashes uh the book i don't know if you've ever read that um but you know i think uh what uh charles uh said in there was uh that's cmt was, level three that book yeah, he, yeah he's 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 in there yeah um one of the biggest things was uh oh, what was it uh there's nothing what, more disturbing than, uh, or for one's well being and judgment as to seeing your friend get rich. So it creates a mania of sort. You know, you're seeing your friend get rich, you want to get rich too, and it yeah. makes you bad decisions. I don't know if you saw the, um, the guy who had a um, retirement account. I'm, I think he saw all the ETF that he had and convert all these ETF and all these funds that were, you know, compounding for years and bought game stocks. They have a half a million dollars and put it in just one stocks. When wow. he heard the, what he heard, he went to his retirement account, saw they get rid of ETF. Now they're just gonna give me something. So I am just gonna put it in one stock. I'm gonna make a million bucks or something. It was his theory, I believe. That was yesterday when I saw it. Today is even worse because today's close was, I think it's 80 bucks right now. So yesterday was yeah. like 100 and something. So that guy probably lost the entire retirement account. Yeah, and that's, that's, the, that's the sad stories nobody wanted to tell you about when people were kind of rooting this on. Um, you know, you saw a lot of people saying, well, it's democratizing and uh, the little guy is beating Wall Street. And You, you know, the story was going to end badly, um, that that wasn't going to be the full case. It's just and, and people rooted it on, which I didn't really enjoy. I, I thought it was kind of a, a bad thing to do. You know, you don't want to have people doing that because, you know, somebody is going to exactly do that. They're going to sell out of their fully well diversified portfolio and try to just put everything on GameStop and, you know, become a millionaire overnight. And yeah. that's the worst thing that you can do, you know, like if you want to participate, fine, you know, take 1% of your portfolio. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Like a $5,000. Yeah. 2000, 3000, something like that. Yes. That, yeah. that makes more sense. But now you're going to put your entire phone to believe that you're going to, you're going to make all the money. Oh, I, because I, I believe the mentality that, oh, it's just generating 20% annually compounding. Uh, that's 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 for, for old school. Uh, my own school is I have to make a million bucks in a day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, a crazy idea. So, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's extremely crazy. So, yeah, I mean, what, what the smart thing would be to do, like you said, you know, put a couple thousand dollars or 1% and, you know, because who knows, it could have went to a thousand dollars, you know, and you could have made money and, and take some off there. You know, you could have made 500% on that 1%. Uh, but, you know, you also got to understand you can't sacrifice your well-being. Uh, that's the one thing for my investment advising days, working at the advisory. Um, you just, you can't take that kind of risk. And 
I mean, I had a great year last year uh, trading and stuff, but again, I'm trading my own capital. Um, I'm managing risk extremely effectively, uh, taking losses super fast, letting some gains run. I'm, you know, trading in and out, but I can't do that. You know, and mom and pop can't do that exactly either, unless you're watching the market 24 seven, you know, you can't be doing that, you know, while you're working off of your Robinhood app, it's, it's extremely difficult. Um, information is being disseminated lightning quick and you're just if you're not there to make decisions you know things can happen fast i've seen it before uh, digital ally or you know like uh, sunrun or back or sun edison back in the day and you know like people are playing these highly shorted stocks that you know have potential but also have potential for bankruptcy and you know you can win fast and lose very fast uh you know, that's, it's tough to see retail or your mom and pops doing things with their retirement funds that can, you know, dramatically impact their future. Yeah, no, that, you know? that guy was, I mean, so naive when he made that decision is just insane. He probably yeah. lost 10 to 15 years of work or more. Who knows? Yeah. And, and I, I can't lie when I was, you know, at the R RIA and we had, you know, clients call when they would see, I think it was uh, Weight Watchers on one of them or something like, you know, like they would be mad that we weren't in it. And I'm like, we're like, well, I mean, that's highly risky and your risk profile is extremely conservative. <laughs> you know, like I can't put you in something that's risky if you're conservative. Uh, you know, it just, I mean, we'll get in trouble then, uh, you know, by, misallocating uh, funds for somebody that's identifies as extremely risk averse, but then they want to be extremely risky. Uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's a tough scenario to get put into, but you know, we, we took calls all the time. It was, why aren't we in this? It's up 300%. I'm like, well, I mean, again, it's just your risk profile doesn't call for that. Yeah. Um, you know, but you know, just, I just pulled up a quick screen here. And, and one of the funny things is you can see, you'll see a lot of stocks that were in squeeze mode on this quick one. Um, but you know, I, I kind of try to throw in like another additional uh, kind of factor from like more of a fundamental standpoint. We want to look at what, like maybe what, you know, future expected revenue growth is, you know, um, and it kind of weeds out some of your risky assets. So as you can see, GameStop's not in there. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, AMC's in there. So what will happen when you kind of weed this out, you'll see there's kind of two things of growth. You'll see like a company like FUBU TV that is actually experiencing major growth or maybe like a workhorse, but you'll also get like an AMC in here, which is weird, right? So like AMC, death of movie theaters, we're thinking, um, but you know, if we do open back up, you know, they're, they are going to grow. I mean, but it's not too hard to grow from basically nothing. Uh, so that's, that's one thing. So you will find like value plays, but that, that's kind of how I look at it as well as try to weed out some of the, the, the worst companies, you know, like GameStop, one of the biggest things is just think to yourself when entering that trade. So the guy say that puts all his money in there on his uh, 401k money and, and for retirement into GameStop, you know, what's, what's the strategy two, three years from now, you know, uh, they do have somebody that joined the board, the founder of Chewy. He wants them to be, I think the, the Amazon of games, right? So like a, a, a marketplace, a hub. But I kind of find that hard to, to believe that they'll ever be able to do that when you have Sony and Microsoft as the two leading platforms. And they already have digital downloads on their platforms through their own service. I just don't see them kind of relinquishing that privilege to somebody else to provide the games, right, for download. Uh, maybe computers, maybe more of the Dungeons and Dragons world, that kind of stuff. <laughs> but, you know, that's a niche market. You know, I mean, even PC gaming is big, but it's still a little bit more niche um, of a market, you know, when you're kind of just focusing on PC games and say like, you know, like those role playing games that they offer in their stores. Um, you know, I, I just don't see them having explosive revenue growth from it. And maybe I'm wrong, but um, no, there, I don't think I don't think it's a, a, I don't think they, they they got the case when they saw the short interest and they were, you know, um, making a case when 
stock went up to almost five hundred dollars. That that doesn't explain the valuation at all. That's like insane that valuation. And just just the fact there because I heard some people saying, "Oh, buy the deep, buy the deep, <laughs> buy the deep." <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the question would be, are you still buying the deep? Because uh, I wouldn't be careful if it were you, you know, and just uh, it, 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 this is not this is not a casino. This is a risk management game that you can have the best strategy in the world. But if you have a poor management poor risk management, you're going to fuck up. <laughs> so and, and that's that's when people don't understand that because they believe in easy money and they believe what they what they see on Twitter or news or the stocks. And they start calculating, oh, if I bought the stock in seven dollars and I bought X amount of shares, I will probably will have X amount of money in two days. It don't say understand the other side. Yeah, because you made a mistake, it's gonna be the opposite. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so, it's, it's it's that old thing where kind of like sometimes you say like if you loved it at 400 you're going to really love it at 100 right you know if you're, if you're basing it on that kind of phenomenon um, but yeah i mean the first first thing is first when you're trading uh it's risk management you know you, you got to find the setups and and um, be able to identify you know growing stocks you know you you want to use technical indicators and, and not technical indicators but like technicals and sentiment type stuff that you're looking for on indicators um you know not so much like i guess indicators like macd and stuff i'm talking about but like unique levels uh of interest you know for supply and demand within price uh you know i mean i use some indicators and i look at indicators to kind of see what other people are looking at but they don't make me determine uh, what i'm going to buy or sell uh, but you need to manage risk uh, because the, the biggest thing is you've always got to be able to live uh, to survive and, and fight another day because things will happen. Things will go wrong. Uh, if you lose all your capital, game's over. I mean, that's, yes. you're, you're not going to be able to make more. So it's, um, it's vital that you manage your risk and, and, and honor your stops. That's the saying I've always said is you put a stop and you say, I'm going to buy here if it goes below this. You know, I'm out. Sell. Yes, uh, yes, I'm out. Yep. Um, next. You just got to learn. Yep, you got to learn to do it. Honestly, one of the first recommendations, uh, you know, a, a buddy of mine used to say this, and I say this to people all the time, is open an account. If you're not trading and you're new to trading or you want to start trading on your own, put $500 in an account for yourself or $1,000. Buy some stocks. Say, I'm going to sell it if it goes below this. And then I'm going to scale out if it goes up to this, right? Like, and then, and, and look for price targets uh, and, and scale some of the profits out, maybe let some of it ride. But if it hits your stop to sell, because what happens is men mentally you don't want to sell. So it's the hardest hurdle to get over is to understand losing money is okay. Um, Cause it saves you, you know, often the first loss is the best loss. You know, another saying in the industry, um, but you got to train your mind that you can take a loss and that's the best decision for you because what you can do is you can take that capital and reallocate it elsewhere, which could be a big winner. Um, but you don't want to get stuck in that spiral where it just keeps going down and down and down. And you're like, it's going to come back. It's going to come back because it may never come back. Uh, and I unfortunately think we're probably in that scenario with GameStop with everybody that bought at three, 400 um, obviously, I'm not 100% sure, but I mean, it's certainly starting to look like that. Um, it's it's never going to get back there and, and your money is going to be gone. So, yeah. So, man, I respect your time. So, um, you know, we've been for an hour. We're going to, you know, uh, take advantage of your time. I really appreciate it. And I yeah, have a. Uh, so, what is this? Uh, what platform is this? Um, is this. Uh, um, so this is uh Thomas Reuters icon. Um, oh, okay. This is, this is what I use at work. Um, I know last time I think we had to use something else because I, I still can't oddly enough get my icon on my laptop, but it's sitting on my AWS. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, going to be editing this video and I'm going to show everything just a little bit. I just playing at the, the beginning. Yeah. But because this is, you have your account here or anything, right? So right here. <laughs> 
no, if it's someone see this, there's no personal information here. No, no, nothing on the icon. Uh, TD, you, you might have saw like a small account just because I use TD for a, a tiny IRA, of my wife's. Uh, but that oh, okay, 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 okay. So it's I'm like gonna... her leftover money from a long time ago in a four hundred one k. So no, I don't have any any of the larger accounts. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just want to make sure that, and also. Um, there is a friend who is in Chicago right now. He's from Venezuela too. That he's looking yeah. for to do uh, internships. So he he's doing like a master in in finance or something. So he 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 likes options. I think he tries options too. So I you know if he's, you know anything on your company or somewhere that someone is looking for an intern, just let me know. <laughs> I don't off the top of my head, and, and I know we don't have a lot going on right now. Obviously, with we've we've been out of the offices for quite a while. At least the traders have, and a lot of the other staff, sales staff is still in. Um, that's because sales teams kind of need to have that energy. Uh, but you know, if I do hear of anything, I can definitely let you know. Um, you can always reach out if he ever has any questions too. I always happy to answer questions about the industry yeah. or. Or Where we can options that he may be curious about, or I can let me talk to him. Maybe we can set up a short Zoom call with him too, because he's a good friend. He's he's in, um, he's a very smart guy, and he's doing. I don't know if it's an MBA or something in Chicago. Like, is, a, it a, is he at Booth or is he Northwestern or? Let me see. Yeah, one second. Um. He is doing the master. Let's see. Yes, I, he told me. Uh, you the you Chicago, I think. Okay. Yeah. So well, I mean, if you know something, he's, he's a good guy, smart guy, and I mean, I like to help some people that I think is it were to to help them, you know. And and the, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's a young guy, but you know try to get into the um, finance you know it's very hard it's, as you know it's not easy <laughs> I, I can attest to that trust me I, I didn't start out in the industry that i wanted to be in at all so i like i like i told you in the beginning i literally took a job that was kind of like quid pro quo like okay i'll help with your operations if you kind of let me kind of mentor underneath the investment analyst side yeah, um, I had to finagle my way in, fight and claw, and you know now I'm never gonna let go. <laughs> you know, the and the last thing I'm gonna share with you is um this year I'm gonna start writing a book in in Spanish um about risk management for retail traders. So, okay. so I have a an, a another friend who's CMT. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm working on my CMT level two, but this guy CMT already. So between us, we're gonna write this book and probably give you a copy of the in English version, of course, that you can take a look and you um you let me know what you think. It's gonna oh, be a short book, yeah. 150 pages, just cases, typical things, the risk manager tools and how to measure position sizing, all this kind of stuff, but in a more um not as complicated as it is in previous books you know old books they try to explain things like that it's more like a technical advance for i mean more advanced yes yeah, so you're not gonna like dive into the kelly criteria <laughs> nah, no nah, or optimal f or things no 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 not not like that it's just more lab for retail traders for wrong who traders for people like that that yeah, that's basically Yes, my idea is to having in Spanish. If, if it's good, maybe I can launch in English. We'll see. Yeah, well, and that that'd be nice. Yeah, I mean, it, beginners really should have something. Uh, sometimes you kind of start out reading a, a book, and you know, when that's the problem. Good, There's nothing. They're like, yeah. really, like it's just a few. Really, it's and, like and you're kind of exactly. You're kind of overwhelmed to begin with because you don't understand a lot of the concepts that are being talked about or anything like that. So, uh, I I remember that. I mean back in college, you know, I was like, oh boy, like, you know, what is this? You know, like um, it was, it was just a giant learning process and it, it kind of intimidates you to begin with. So it's actually, that's a really great idea uh, to give something to somebody that 
wants to do it on their own or wants to try to do some of it on their own maybe, um, but doesn't understand it and simple concepts, not bringing them too deep into it, uh, you know, keeping it very simple, you know, keep it simple, stupid, you know, kiss. Yes, back. correct. That's, that's what we're looking for to do something like that. So nice. That's that. excited to see that. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that'd be great. You know, like I said, hopefully it's a big hit, you know, obviously, uh, uh, in, in the, in the, you know, Spanish market, the Latin America market there. Uh, and then maybe you can bring it to American side. And yeah. I know you're talking about, I know you're talking about how, you know, like I think before I've seen that you've talked about how Latin America doesn't have enough uh, education on this. So I, I think that's awesome. Yeah, man. That's, that's what I'm, you know, heading to is just educate people in a, in a way, in a different way, you know, the typical way that people try to, you know, offer, oh, I, I'm making a hundred dollars per day. You're doing Uber. No, just go with me. And then you're going to make a friend, your computer. You don't have to Uber anymore. Uh, it doesn't work in that way. There's no guarantee that no one can guarantee you anything. <laughs> like yeah. that's wow. one of the craziest. You I can only <laughs> imagine, I can only imagine the, the, the scams or the fraud services that go on outside of the U S because we have plenty within the U S but I can imagine it's even more prevalent outside of the U.S. in, in oh. countries that don't have the infrastructure that we have, uh, and especially with forex trading kind of being the biggest yes. uh, market. You know, that's also where you have the biggest scam and fraud type services. Uh, so I, I think it's extremely admirable what you're doing uh, for the communities there. Um, you know, I, 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 I trade for it for fun. But yeah. I only have a small amount, probably three, four percent, because you know the volatility is just oh, yeah. insane. But I love it because it's very difficult, very challenging. Forex is one of the hardest market I've ever seen, and yes. it, the fun part I've been doing this for for quite some time. And you know, I registered for the brokers. And do you have any idea how many emails, spams, crap that I get on a daily basis? Just because I sometimes I Google stuff in English or Spanish about Forex, you know, reports, see what the other trades are doing, not because I want to copy them, just, you know, what's going, what the sentiment, you know? Yep. And I get all these massive, like, emails, phone calls, whatever you can think. And even from guys from China, you know? <laughs> It's insane. I had to like uh, block all these numbers and you know all these like, what's going on with this? Last year, especially last this so far this year, nothing. But like, well, I had to do the manual process, start blocking. Yeah. You know, but right now I filter and now I'm more like, you know, comfortable. But last year was insane. Insane. Yeah, I, I, I noticed. I noticed whenever I talk about crypto or something on, on some type of platform, what will happen is I'll get a bunch of not crypto uh, services, they will be Forex services because I, I feel like they, they kind of like, they try to tie into the crypto market because, you know, looking at it from a currency perspective. But yeah, I've gotten Instagram. I mean, so many people like accept this message, you know, and like, I, I got a trading strategy. I'm like, you, you understand you're talking to somebody that does this professionally, right? Yeah, They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. my system works. And I'm like, first off, you know, like maybe like if they said something, I'll be like, well, this was wrong or, you know, that was right, but that was wrong. You know, like it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's, you know, the, people do prey on other people and you got to watch out for that. Say hi, <laughs> say hi to my friend. Hi. Say hi. Say hi. Hi. Say, ask him hi. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, man, pleasure to talk to you. Have a good one. You know, I love you, man. I love you. You're, I'm your big fan. So I always following you, what you're doing on Twitter, and I hope to chat with you soon and we can get together. Yeah, anytime. I always open to it. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow you to my level two, CMT level two. That's my next goal. All right. Well, we'll go through whatever questions you have, and uh, we'll yeah. get you that level two. Uh, you know, like I said, we don't want to see any more setbacks. You're, you're, you're going straight on to the designation so that we can sponsor you and uh, yeah, you yeah. can have it. Thank you, man. All right. Have a good have day. Have a good night. You too, man. Bye.